We've got an E64 M6 in with us today at Reedish Motorsport. Only 42,000 miles on this car. It's come in for a violent clutch judder and also not selecting gear. And after some basic diagnostic tests, we've confirmed that uh, it's highly likely that the clutch is faulting, and it is. We've taken the gearbox out, which you can see here, on our stand, and found that the clutch release bearing has failed. You can see how much rust is around the back of that. It's a two-piece release bearing, that should be part of this. And the rust that's present on there tells us it's been separated for quite some time. Um, so that hadn't helped matters at all. And also there was lots of clutch debris in the bottom of the bell housing of the gearbox. And let's just go over to the old clutch. And we've got the, so it's a twin plate clutch. We've got one plate here, which is quite low down to its rivets and material, but not actually missing from this one, it's from the captive one here. This is the other clutch drive plate, and you can see some of the material here which is all been thrown out from the inside. So it's definitely a clutch failure on this car and a release bearing failure. So we're going for the clutch and flywheel. So here's the new clutch, the three piece clutch system with also, this is the genuine BMW special tool for centering and also transporting. We've got obviously the release bearing which it comes with, um, that's the new flywheel, here's the old flywheel, and we've got a whole host of other BMW parts as well. So here's all the new bits, uh, the customer also wants a PLCD sensor, because these ones are a little bit problematic, can be at times, so we're going to go for a PLCD sensor whilst it's all apart. Here's the guide sleeve for the inside of the gearbox, that's what the release bearing runs on. Then we've got a clutch fork, a ball pin, a spring clip, rear main seal in case it's leaking, exhaust downpipe, crush washers and clutch bolts. So here's the new bits Darren's fitted. So we've got a new ball pin at the back, a spring clip, um, the clutch lever or the fork. You can just see the guide sleeve, which is there bolted to the gearbox, which is what the release bearing runs on. Now the release bearing is brand new and not in two pieces like how we found it. Also the bell housing has been cleaned out and vacuumed of clutch dust and debris. And now if we go to the vehicle, and then just have a look up here. We've got the flywheel fitted along with the new clutch and they are balanced. There are marking lines on them that have to line up and that's been done as per BMW instruction. So we're very close now to actually offering the gearbox back up into position and then we can think about connecting everything, prop shaft, heat shields, exhaust system, and then we'll be carrying out the um, adaptation process with BMW ISTA software. It's not just a mechanical clutch system on these, it's all electronic, so you have to go through the adaptation process, reset the clutch characteristic curve, teach it a new bite point, and then carry out a road test to make sure the whole repair has been effective. And just to show the attention to detail, here's the BMW supplied grease, which is probably just some um, original normal grease in some fancy packaging, I'm sure a lot of people will say, but regardless, whether it's special tools or greases and lubricants or parts, we try to keep it as genuine as possible, follow the procedures. There's the part number for anybody else who wants to use this on these, and they are for specifically the spline, Darren, is it? Yeah, the oh, spline. On the spline. The end of the shaft and on the back of the pins. Perfect. The pins so are. it's all original following the um, BMW instructions. So here's quite an interesting twist to the end of the M6 clutch and flywheel repair. Now the car is all put back together, the car starts and we're using the BMW ISTA genuine software over the internet direct to BMW server in Germany um, along with the BMW approved battery charger to carry out the adaptation process. Now we've done lots of these before over the years, we've been doing them for about six, at least six if not seven years now and, uh, and they've all been extremely well and straightforward and easy. Now this one won't carry out the adaption process it doesn't complete and we keep getting the fault code coming up saying learning not run and the fault code is 4f67 um, and that's rare so there's a problem somewhere but yet we've got a new clutch new flywheel new ball pin new spring clip new clutch fork uh, it's all new and correctly installed even a new plcd sensor and we happen to find on BMW system a Puma measure for exactly this fault code 4f67 stored unable to adapt clutch fully uh, the clutch characteristic values cannot be taught in as part of the test module so this means it's a BMW known internally known problem that sometimes this may be the situation after resetting adaptations and completing the clutch learning even though the vehicle was driven previously and a complaint with the clutch was not highlighted. So it can happen to people even if they haven't had a new clutch and the clutch was okay. 
It says, if the test plans conclude no issues with the clutch operating components, well, no, because they're all brand new, there may be a possible fault with the clutch slave cylinder, i.e. worn internally. Specific learning during varied pressure application is not possible. In the event of the complaint, work through the corresponding test modules and repair as necessary. This measure was raised to highlight that the clutch slave cylinder was responsible for the complaint as described in isolated cases. So we've got one of these cars that has shown up isolated case that sometimes the clutch adaptation will not be able to be carried out and the fault is relating to a clutch slave cylinder. So like I say, an interesting twist to the end of the repair after it had all the new lovely items Nobody would have ever known that it needed a clutch slave cylinder. Um, and it's, uh, we've even used a PLCD sensor on request at the same time as the customer because they are known to be faulty. Um, and the customer wanted to eliminate that. So it looks like we're going to also have to recommend when doing the clutch and flywheels on the V10 that a slave cylinder is um, recommended. Not essential. People can take a gamble if they like, but it is a recommendation. They're only available from BMW. Here is the old one that we've just taken out and here is the new one. Here's the part number and what it looks like. Now, interestingly, and very annoyingly on the V10s, to do the slave cylinder, you have to take the gearbox back out of the car. So after all that work of the clutch and the flywheel and everything fitted, then the car has to come apart all over again. So the five or six hour job for the clutch and flywheel has to be repeated. So that's why we're gonna start recommending slave cylinders this, that to be done at the same time as clutches. It's only happened this once, but this customer is unfortunately gonna to have to stomach the fact that the labor has to be done all over again just for a, a BMW, actually a known internal BMW fault with some products. And the reason why the clutch and sorry the gearbox has to come back out again is because Darren's going to show us that the slave cylinder here has splines in it and they fit in this way so the slave cylinder fits from the outside of the gearbox but it's secured on the inside with nuts and the only way to then remove that slave cylinder is to take the gearbox out and put your hands into the bell housing area to undo these nuts to then release the slave cylinder outside. Now this is, I think this is the only BMW one we know of like this. All the other ones have splines in the bell housing and nuts on the outside. So you only need to lower the gearbox, not take it out fully. So it's quite a bit of an extra work. Um, parts price is a few hundred pounds. And obviously there's another set of labor to do what is effectively the same job all over again. So certainly worth, if you're going this far into it and paying at the moment, I think it's 2,450 pounds with us for a clutch and a flywheel and all the associated BMW parts. If you're going that far, then it would be great time to consider another couple of hundred pounds for a slave cylinder just to cover that risk and get, get it out of the system. You've got a, then a new one, it's gonna adapt fully every time and there's no labor really. When, whilst you've got the gearbox out for a clutch, there's just no labor to do that. Two, two nuts and it's off compared to five hours to do it all over again if it doesn't adapt. And then we've got that fault code coming up of 4F67. So now the clutch adaptation process is happening with BMW ISTA. You can see there'll always be a red cog on the dash whilst that's happening. It's connected to the ICOM system and on the dash it tells us clutch adaptation active. So that's the work now completed on this 42,000 mile E64 M6 that was in for violent clutch release, clutch judder problems and it turned out to be a clutch had broken up. So it's clutch flywheel, ball pin spring clip, clutch fork, um, PLCD sensor and the slave sensor that you saw just in the video at the end of the process. We've now carried out the adaption process which worked perfectly with the new slave cylinder, um, reset the clutch characteristic curve, taught a new clutch release point or bite point and now carried out our 12 mile road test which we're very happy everything's working fine. Um, we've done three more subsequent cold starts and road tests and everything's perfect so um, there we go the job is finished and now the car can go home back to the customer. Oh, <laughs> oh,